Ebola is real. If someone says Ebola is a man-made, no, Ebola is real, real, real virus. Because I know the, the effects of Ebola in this country. How many people Ebola have been destroyed in, in front of me? I was in the confirmed world for two weeks. In India, I met 11 others in the, in the confirmed world. I met 10, I met 11. So I was there for some time and the eight died. Only three of us survived, the eight died. In just that short space of time, we lost about 11 doctors and the country is having less than 200 doctors. It's quite a horrible experience seeing a colleague being managed as an Ebola victim and a few days later, he or she is dead and you will be the very one to disinfect him and get him into the body bag. We're right in the heart of the biggest known outbreak of Ebola. Here in Sierra Leone and in the neighboring West African countries of Liberia and Guinea, at least 11,300 people died and some 28,000 were infected by the disease between December 2013 and May 2016. An unprecedented health crisis which sparked an equally unprecedented research effort to fight the deadly disease, especially in the search for a safe and effective vaccine. An effort that, according to the researchers, still working here on the ground in clinics like this one, is starting to bear fruit. Back in 2014, Emma was 23 years old. She was studying management in Freetown, the country's capital. She knew that a deadly virus transmitted through body fluids was causing a lot of suffering. And then one day she came down with a fever, diarrhea, violent vomiting and joint pain. My friend lost his father. I visit her. I'm here for three days complete. The father died, they buried him. So I was there in the house. After they buried them, I was back where I stay. I went home. I started feel fever. I was feeling so hopeless that time the disease was attacked me because Still, at that time, I was afraid because they said whenever they take you to the treatment center, you will not come back again. So I started locking myself inside the room. Emma was isolated for six days at home and then taken to a local clinic. She eventually won her battle against Ebola, but it came with a cost. Forced to stop her studies after contracting the disease, she now lives at home with few prospects of finding a job. The region where Emma lives was heavily affected by the outbreak. Whole villages were placed under quarantine. Families were not able to meet for fear of contagion and the local economy collapsed. It's one of the reasons why the area was selected by scientists from a European research project. They are trying to develop a new vaccine regime to prevent the disease. More than 1,000 healthy volunteers are taking part in the clinical trial in Sierra Leone. It includes adults and children between the ages of 1 and 17. Today, this two-year-old is getting a vaccination under the watchful eye of his mum. Excuse me. Thank you. If my child takes this vaccine, is my child going to be cured for Ebola? They used to ask that question. So we tell them um, it's a vaccine trial. We do not know yet if it might cure your child from having Ebola. It's a study. That's it. Okay, that is all. All the volunteers are closely monitored before and after their injection. Doctors routinely inform volunteers and their families about the disease they are trying to prevent. Yeah. Ebola is one of the many viral hemorrhagic fevers. So it is precisely 
a multi multi system disease meaning that it can affect almost any organ in your body so it can affect your eyes it can affect your ears it can affect your um, blood vessels it can affect your skin almost everything the reproductive system According to the World Health Organization, Ebola's mortality rate ranges from 50 to 90 percent. Many of the doctors now involved in the clinical trial were on the front line during the last major outbreak. No one was safe, but that's why that's what actually motivated me to take up this job, to see that we're going to produce a vaccine to prevent such things from happening again. Doctors say the new candidate vaccine is showing encouraging signs. Hello. We've seen that the vaccine is safe and participants are actually producing antibodies against the, the virus, in their blood against the virus. So it's very promising. The volunteers' blood samples are analyzed in local laboratories. The labs like this one did not exist before the Ebola outbreak and had to be built from scratch. The region is not even connected to the national grid, so researchers rely on generators to power the high-tech equipment. All right, uh, going to the minus 80 freezer. You're looking at the safety of the subject. Is the vaccine safe to be given to the subject? Uh, secondly, uh, the efficacy. Is the vaccine has um, efficacy that it can be able to work for and uh, to prevent the disease? And thirdly, immunogenicity. Can it mount the immune system, the body to uh, provoke, provoke the body immune system so that uh, the body can fight the disease, the viruses, uh, especially in our case, is uh, Ebola. The vaccine regime under trial in Sierra Leone is being developed and closely monitored from right here in the Netherlands. The regime is made up of two separate vaccines. Researchers say that dual approach has the potential to provide a better and more long-lasting immunity against a dangerous family of viruses. The virus, when you get infected, really reproduces very rapidly. You have millions and millions of viruses in your blood. That leads to that very high mortality. And that also implies that the, the immune protection that you need to, to get with a vaccine needs to be extremely high to be able to cope with such a, a load of virus. Ebola is not gone and it will not go away. It, it will uh, be there and come back again and again. In addition to lab research, scientists say the active involvement of local communities is crucial when conducting these type of complex clinical trials. The groundwork of really explaining the product, explaining the study procedures, explaining why we do what we do, um, really helps them understand the purpose and, and helps the trial go smoother. While more research is still needed, scientists believe the vaccine regime they are developing has the potential for success. So I don't know what happened with their site. So we have to do better. 2019. We have um, some very promising data from our clinical trials. Um, the vaccine is inducing strong and lasting immune responses. We are very, very happy to see that. Uh, so with this data package in hand, we are now planning to go for licensure and that is one of our immediate goals. The latest research comes under the umbrella of the Innovative Medicines Initiative, the world's biggest public-private partnership in life sciences. Its current 3.2 billion euro budget is co-funded by both the European Commission and Europe's pharmaceutical industry. The goal is to share knowledge in order to develop the next generation of vaccines, medicines and treatments against a myriad of diseases, including Ebola. The world was very, very concerned about where this was going and nobody could predict what was going to happen. So that uh, we were able to mobilise uh, both industry parties and the public sector uh, 
We built very, very quickly the whole uh, uh, Ebola program, which included not only vaccines, but uh, diagnostics and, and so on and so forth. Kadi Atu is a head teacher at this local school. She was diagnosed with Ebola during the early stages of the last major epidemic. Now 34, she often shares with both her students and family tips on how to prevent the disease. I know the signs and what you should not do. That we should not play with sick people. We should not eat meat, especially the bush meat. We should not um, share some things with a sick person. Like, for example, when someone has used a cup, we is sick, he use it again. So I know about all that. The research into finding an effective vaccine for Ebola is set to continue. More extensive clinical trials are being considered, offering new hope to those living in high-risk zones.